So, I guess this will be story time, huh? Story time. I just wanted to do a really quick story of how I ended up in Miami um, from Chicago. I've been in Miami for a while. I'm not going to say how many years. I don't know if I already mentioned how many years. So I'm going to keep that on a hush hush for now. And I will say that I moved to Miami at the age of 19. Now I've been told many times that oh my goodness you moved to Miami at the age of 19 by yourself with no family. You're so brave. All this stuff. Do I think I was brave? Absolutely not. I wasn't brave. I'm not a brave person. I don't take chances. I was just young and I didn't think things through. I just kind of just did what I wanted to do. I didn't think of any consequences or anything. The worst I thought was, okay, maybe things won't work out. If they don't work out, I'll just go back home, live with my parents, whatever. <laughs> wow. I never even thought of like the dangers, um, the fact that I didn't know anyone and it's a completely new city. I didn't have a car. I mean, I had a car, but I sold it. That's another long story. Looking back, it wasn't brave. It was nuts. Anyway, so yeah, just to backtrack a little bit, I was a, I was going to UIC. I was a student at UIC, University of Illinois, Chicago. And um, I think my sophomore year, yeah, I withdrew from school thinking that I was going to take a little break, you know, a semester, maybe two, just to, you know, see how things go for me. I became a flight attendant. You heard right. I was a flight attendant. <laughs> yeah, I did that for about six, six months. I was a flight attendant for about six months for a little um, airline called, let me see, Chicago Express. And they, it was like a little tiny propeller plane. It was a Saab 340B which those planes had like i think up to 34 passengers one flight attendant and we flew you know locally like we flew from like illinois to iowa to kentucky you know not too far out if i'm not mistaken i believe chicago express was a tiny little subsidiary of ATA and I think they all went bankrupt like a few years ago I don't know anyway so yeah I was doing that I was a flight attendant at this time and I I was working at Midway Airport in Chicago and I decided you know what I want to work for a larger airline so I went to O'Hare and I decided that I was going to go and figure out like how can I apply for all these larger airlines I don't even remember what airlines are there and I ran into a TSA agent he was flirting with me I didn't appreciate it because he was so much older Ugh. but basically he told me that he was also a flight attendant at one at one time and that you know I should apply to be a TSA agent I said okay let me look into it because he really could he was very convincing he was saying how much money he was making and how the job was supposedly easy and all this stuff so I said okay I can I can look into it whatever and I applied but I didn't apply for Chicago I applied for Miami honestly I didn't think I was gonna get it it's just like one of those things you're like oh I'll just apply and whatever it's not gonna happen anyway well, I got it. <laughs> Fast forward a couple of months. I now live in Miami and I work full time for TSA. So I worked for TSA for quite some time, um, years. So just leave it at that. One thing that was really scary for me was when I made the decision to quit living in Miami understanding that okay you need to know Spanish if you're gonna get a good job I was already on a side I was working as a freelance fashion stylist I've worked on small sets 
and I've worked on large sets. Uh, that was fun. That was a fun period of my of my life. I was doing that for a while, for a few years actually, and decided that I didn't want to do that anymore. Then I became an independent publicist. Uh, I've gotten clients featured in television and um, in magazines, all that good stuff. So that was fun too. I did that for a while. Didn't really want to stick with that. Maybe I'll go back to that later in life. Who knows? I don't know. And then I had an opportunity to become a social media manager. And I remember thinking a few years back, prior, I should say, when I was working for TSA, that I wanted to be a social media manager because what an easy job. Like, social media. I can be on social media all day, every day. Yeah, it's not exactly what you think. If you're not a social media manager, if you don't do social media for business, trust me, it ain't that easy. And it's time consuming and it kind of sucks. I'm just being silly. It's not that bad. It's actually a, a good job to have. They did require that I spoke Spanish. I'm the type of person that if I feel like I'm qualified and the only thing that's keeping me from getting a position is... Or I would say, the only thing that disqualifies me is the fact that I'm not bilingual. I will apply anyway. That's just how I am because you never know. You might get the job. And in this case, that's what happened. I got the job. Um, and my boss asked me in, in the interview, do you speak Spanish? And I said, no, I do not. But I am willing to take a class and learn Spanish as I do this job. And he was like, okay, sure, you're hired. <laughs> and can you believe, well, it wasn't right on the spot. But, you know, I got the job almost immediately after. And I was kind of shocked because I know, okay, so I applied for this job on LinkedIn. And on LinkedIn, they tell you how many other candidates applied for that job. So I can see that was like, over 200 people, it was like around 250 people or something like that, applied for this job. Now, living in Miami, and a lot of them had, you know, experience, I'm sure, as a social media manager. I had never done it before. And I'm sure many of them were also bilingual. I was not. So, yeah. That's why I always say, apply, apply, apply anyway. You might not have all the qualifications but maybe they might see something in you and hire you maybe you are the one that sticks out you never know don't sell yourself short anyway so yeah I got the job did I ever take a class and do I speak Spanish now I did take a class yes um but no I don't speak Spanish not, not a lick I'm just kidding. No, I speak a very little bit of Spanish. Um, I couldn't keep up with the class. I'm not going to front. I was not balling and I couldn't afford it. So, uh, does my boss still ask me from time to time if I speak Spanish? Yes, they asked me. The president of the company asked me just last week if I spoke Spanish. Yeah, they asked me. They asked me a lot. Now, I don't have the same role. I'm not the social media manager anymore. I was promoted to the marketing manager. I have a lot more responsibilities and I do get paid more. But, um, no, I don't speak Spanish. Still don't speak Spanish. Well, that's all I have for now. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, comment, share, and as always, subscribe. Oh, by the way, don't forget, I'm doing a free giveaway. So if you haven't seen this video yet, make sure you check it out. Talk to you guys soon.